Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Theodore. He's 2 Echo Zero, a Golf India Yankee, which is a United Kingdom call. And uh, he has this question, why 450 ohms? I'm trying to understand why in the first place someone would like to invent and then mass produce 450 ohm cable. The answer is because it's incredibly useful. Um, I recall all antenna setups I remember and um, closed what I could come, oh the closest I could come to is to match a very specific type of dipole arms like the Wyndham antenna. For example, laundry line antennas match to 450 ohms, but that's nowhere close to a commercial solution. Was then some specific shape of TV close dipole camera or antenna that has 450 ohms. Actually, if you look at twin lead, this is twin lead. This is the kind of thing you would put on a television. This is 300 ohms. So it's commonly referred to as twin lead. Now, back in the days before high definition television, before cable television, everybody had antennas. And the twin lead that was sold was mass produced and very cheap. This is a much higher quality twin lead. And it is 300 ohms. Okay. 300 ohm characteristic impedance. Okay, so we'll put that down and take a look at this, which is now what's called window line. Yeah, so, so named because of all the chunks cut out here to reduce weight and reduce cost. It's 450 ohms characteristic impedance. Now you can make open wire line, which I don't have a sample of. Um, it's um, about like this and it has little plastic spacers every foot or so, okay, that hold this and these are bare. And that is true open wire line and it has 600 ohms characteristic impedance. Now let's take a look at, first of all, define characteristic impedance. Okay, the characteristic impedance is uh, Z naught, which stands for R. This is the impedance is usually given as the letter Z. Um, and R is just for resistance and circuit theory, but this impedance can have both an amplitude, the absolute value of Z naught, and this is what is usually given, let's say 450 ohms here, but it can have a phase, uh, which would like to be zero, but uh, you can, if you do not have a multiple of a half wavelength in line length, you will have a characteristic impedance that has a phase angle in it. Okay, the characteristic impedance, Z, equals, of course, the voltage over the current. Um, well, we'll use V instead of E. Remember, E equals IR, so E over I equals R. We'll go ahead and make that an E. The characteristic impedance of a line is the ratio of the voltage to the current. The ratio of the voltage to the current. Now, as this goes up for a given amount of power on the line, that means that the ratio between the voltage and the current is 300 in this case. So it's 300, the, the voltage in volts is 300 times the current um, I in um, 
amps. Okay? That's not supposed to be an equation. Now note what happens here. As the voltage goes up, the current comes down. The voltage goes up, the current comes down by quite a bit. In fact, here it is half of what it is here. Now, the power loss in the transmission line, uh, the power that is lost due to resistive loading, is uh, I squared times R. Um, power equals E. I. You can always go back to basics. It's the, and we can substitute in here, um, I equals from here, E over R. Okay. Or we can do E equals I over R. So this would be P equals I squared over R. Okay, I squared over R. Now, we note that we've got half the current here that we do here. Okay, so that goes down by half. You square it, it goes down by a quarter. So 0 0.25 times what it would be here. And then the R goes up to 600. So this number goes up. So the current, or the power loss, goes way down as the impedance goes up. So this is the reason for higher impedance lines, is that there's less power lost. Now coax is a crummy 50 ohms. Okay, coax. This can seven be 75 ohms. Okay, and the point being here that these lines lose much less power in going to the antenna. Now, that's very, very important because if you have a long line and coax might give you a higher loss than you would find acceptable, then you go to one of these solutions. Now, there is a problem. Okay, and let me tell you what the problem is. With coax, if we look end on, there's a center conductor and a shield. Now the current, the power, well, no, let's go with the current because uh, if you look at it as a field, the power is in the dielectric, but the current is on the inside of the shield and here, and everything having to do with the signal is inside the coax, assuming 100% braid coverage. There are some coaxes that do not have that. Now, if you look at open wire line end on, okay, and you've got some plastic around it, like that, and so on, the actual um, pointing vector is in here, in the middle, and the fields around this extend out like this. They get weaker as they go with most of the power in here, but some outside here. So you immediately see an advantage to coax. Coax keeps everything inside. That means if there's a strong external field, it doesn't matter, it cannot penetrate the coax. If you do open wire line, the field structure of this to provide the power, the electromagnetic field, or EMF, uh, is outside here. So if you're going to mount this, you need to put like a piece of plastic with a metal ring and some screws to screw it into something. These are called standoffs. Now, one thing that you can do with coax because the electromagnetic field is entirely within the coax, you can coil it up. If you've got extra coax, just coil it up. But with this kind of thing, if you coil it up, you'll get the different layers interfering with each other. For example, uh, 
this right here is just a coil of uh, uh, window line, which is often mistakenly called ladder line, but it's window line. Uh, this right here, you couldn't do this with extras. You need to lay it out in kind of a random pattern on the ground so that it doesn't do that. So why those ohm figures? Okay, it used to be that 600 ohms was what everybody used, but it's unwieldy. It um, will make both of those an I and an E, so it's, one of them is the right spelling. Um, okay, it's unwieldy because it's not insulated and so on. Uh, the 300 ohm is the twin lead uh, for um, television receive. Okay, but the thing is that the wires are so close together, if you put a lot of power through it, it'll arc over. All right, so that's why the 600 became popular. The 450 came out when it was convenient to manufacture something, and you see that, that this is much broader, wider, than the twin lead in there, okay? It's much wider, so much less of a chance of it arcing over with higher power. Now, why 450? Well, you got a chicken and egg problem here. It's 450 because it's been 450. Okay, 450 ohm um, window line, we'll call it by its correct name, window line actually entered amateur radio um, within my lifetime okay when i first came into amateur radio you had 50 ohm coax and you had 600 op ohm open wire line 450 ohm came out as kind of like a broad twin lead and so what happened is a lot of people have gravitated to it it can carry very high power and it uh, has very low line loss, okay, be again, because of the higher impedance. The higher impedance you go, the better. You can make your own twin lead to anything. There's a formula that is the, uh, basically the diameter of the wire, okay, and the distance separating these two is all there is to the formula, and it will tell you the impedance. So this stuff is easy to manufacture, readily available. It's useful when you want very low loss, like in receiving circuits. Also, let's take a look at this. If you have a dipole just made of a wire, that impedance at the center is anywhere from 30 to 70 ohms. Okay. Now if you feed this with ladder line or window line, 450 ohms, Obviously, there's an issue right there, okay? You need a 9 to 1 ballon to, uh, right there, which you could put in there or not. And then you bring this down to a tuner and 50 ohms out to the, um, to the uh, radio. Now, most tuners have a connection on the back for open wire line. Now what happens in here is obviously there's going to be line loss because of the mixed uh, impedances. However, remember that thing that we showed you that the impedance is the ratio of the voltage to the current, uh, but the power lost is, e, uh, is I squared over R. So as this goes up, the current goes way down. It actually goes down even more. It's multiplied by like 0 0.25. You end up, even though there's a lot of standing waves on this, you end up losing less power overall than you might with a piece of coax. Okay. Plus, you can tune this on just about any band right here, up here. That's the versatility of the 450 ohms. So to answer your question, why 450 ohms? 
The answer is because somebody started making 450 ohm window line uh, and the amateur community picked up on it along with the community that has uh, uh, some antennas and some um, fringe zones, which of course now have been replaced by satellite dishes. But the point is it's very low loss, can handle high power, and uh, it's cheap, it's dirt cheap. And if you take care in installing it, you can uh, get some good results. Why 450? It's compromised between the 300 and the 600 of the two existing uh, lines. So there you have it. Now, if you are, are a viewer who would like to help support this channel financially, go to decastlercom support. If you would like to learn about our monthly giveaway, go to decastlercom giveaway. Also, please be sure to subscribe, click like, and until next time, 73.